there it is. This is the machine that my wife recently got for me as a surprise gift. It wasn't any particular occasion. She just came one afternoon and said, hey, your package is on the front porch. And I said, I, I didn't order anything. What package? And she said, no, I, I ordered it. It's a machine from Goodwill. Oh. <laughs> I said, okay. And she goes, yep, I won an auction for $10. And it was one cent shipping and $4 handling fee. So it was $14 and one cent. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> So I unboxed it and it's this is it. So when I was unboxing it, I asked her, "Hey, well, why did you get this for me?" And she said, "Well, honey, you know, I know you miss working on them and you haven't been able to work on them for a long time, so I just thought you'd like to have a machine to fool around with a little bit and work on. I said, well, thank you very much. That's really thoughtful, right? That's, that's very sweet and thoughtful. Now, you know, I, I've been married for over 40 years. <laughs> and in that time, I've learned to interpret what I call wife speak. So when she said, I know you miss working on these, you haven't been able to work on them, I thought you'd like to fool around with it and have something to work on. I know what she's really saying is, I got you this to occupy your time so you'd quit bugging me so much. <laughs> so fair is fair. <laughs> and uh, I unpacked it here and this is this is what I found. So it's a Singer Model 466, and that's new to me. I've I've never worked on a 466. I did a 413 once a little bit, and a 457 was the one I learned how to replace the top gear. And this is in the same family and the same decade of machines uh, it's got some some different things so I'm just going to inspect it here uh, to see where where any problems may be and if I need to order parts or anything like that so I thought I'd do this video just to show you how I take a look at a machine for the first time when I when I get one okay so it's a Singer model 466 and get the needle up. First thing I do is take out the needle after stabbing myself with needles a couple of times over the years I learned to take those out right away. <laughs> so let's get rid of that. Next I'm going to see if it has a bobbin case and it does have a bobbin case so I usually just take it out they always need a good cleaning anyway. This needle plate just lifts up, comes out. It's got a little spring on this keeper post. And then uh, I think I'll take off the slide plate by pushing it forward away from me off of the spring here. Needs a good cleaning too. The machine has a pretty funky smell to it. Kind of like an organic uh, outdoor tool shed or storage shed kind of smell. Kind of wood and pollen and dirt and uh, maybe bug spray and that kind of stuff. <laughs> so I'm going to lift this up, swing it to the side, the bobbin case positioning spring. Grab this metal class 66 bobbin and whoops. Go ahead and bring the needle up all the way. 
get that metal bobbin case out. Looks to be in pretty good shape, really. You know, one thing I'm noticing right away is the, the machine's dirty and stuff, but cosmetically it's pretty nice. I've got just a little yellowing of some plastic up here, but I don't have a bunch of scrapes and, and uh, gouges. I got some grease and dirt and sticker glue and some things like that, but just a couple of scrapes. Uh, not bad at all. So anyway, now, what I'm interested in mostly in this machine, because it is of the decade it is, this model does have a, a upright shaft with a gear that goes down and turns the drive pulley and a, and a tiny belt to the hook pulley and that top plastic gear is known to fail. I mean, if, if this one has not failed already, it would probably fail the first time I tried sewing with it. So I'm just going to rotate the handle towards me because I want to see if this hook moves. And it doesn't. <laughs> so the needle goes up and down, right? But that hook is just not rotating at all. Now, it, it could be, I can rotate it by hand. I suppose it could be that the timing belt slipped off. But I really only broke or slipped off. I've only had a broken timing belt once. So, I'm under the assumption so far that the top gear is shot. Um take a look at the tension real quick put the presser put down to put tension on seems like it's turning pretty pretty too easy here <laughs> well, it's got some tension on let me lift it up and see if it releases kinda this indicator dial the plus minus is plastic and it's known to break the little bar across there that the release pin pushes on. So I'll have to see that. But it might just need some cleaning and adjusting. We'll hope, right? Because it does release pressure when I lift. And if that is broken, it won't. It's not releasing a lot of pressure. So it might just be cracked. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, plastic, cast aluminum body, and we have a metal nose cover here that's held on by a thumb screw. And I don't, I, I think it's probably steel or some kind of metal. I don't think it's aluminum. It feels a little heavy for aluminum. We have a dial pressure regulator for the presser foot instead of a thumb nut. Okay, and I've, I've seen this before on a few models. Where that dial goes from 1 to 8 to put pressure on. And then if you turn it all the way to D for darn, it takes the pressure off. See how that... Yeah. Okay, so I'm familiar with that. This is the uh, vibrating bracket here holding the needle bar. Let me see if I can put it into wide zigzag. It moves, it's stiff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not moving real good. <laughs> so, again, it might just be cleaning. But there's some movement there. I can see the edge of the needle bar driving arm so that's a good thing continue around the front here and let's take a look because this this has a little extra control slide here this is the width zero is straight stitch five is wide stitch left center right needle and I see the I guess I can move that to show you I can see the needle bar is swinging left to right <clears throat> excuse me 
this is says pattern selector and on the left here it's got a picture of a normal zigzag in the center it looks like blind hem stitch oh okay and and this one to the right is stretch zigzag so that's all very handy stitches for sewing clothes and this is a stylist line this is a move up from the fashion mate and and that's uh, very nice features to have if you're a sewist who makes uh, clothes now I've seen this type of a bobbin winder system too this is the bobbin winder spindle it's on a little arm up here this lever says off and on and all it does is push that arm and spindle over inside there's going to be the rubber tire friction ring that's going to go up against the side of the hand wheel there we go and then it's going to turn this is your adjustable bobbin fill stop you can adjust set it and when your bobbin gets that full it'll automatically push this far enough away that it'll quit turning okay here's an on off switch that operates both the motor and the light here's the uh, bobbin thread tension disc for when you wind the bobbin and this is a feed dog regulator like you call a drop feed it has three settings R for regular F for fine fabrics and in the back is D for darning so in the regular setting the feed dog operates at the normal height let's see if it'll even turn Ooh, that uh, won't turn you can turn it to F for fine and the feed dog will drop a little bit so there's not as much pressure on your fabric when you sew and if you continue that around to the D that's back here it'll drop the feed dog enough that you can monogram or darn or freehand sew so that's a nice feature too very nice this is your stitch length and it's going from six down to 25 and then into the fine area and then even to zero so we would do zero stitch for monogramming uh, freehand sewing darning and then this should be the reverse button that you oh boy is that stiff that you push in and hold and to to sew in reverse <laughs> okay I'm gonna have to learn about this whole system behind here I've never fooled around with it much so so far so good back on the right side here we've got a three-way power cord system where we have one cord going to the wall outlet one going to the uh, foot controller and one going in one lead going into the machine and here's the foot controller typical uh, singer clamshell style it's the cord you notice it's white to match the white kind of looks like cream more than white but and it has a very familiar to me anyway uh, stop motion a big chrome stop motion screw that if we turn left and release pressure on that stop motion washer the motor will just turn the hand wheel so put this over and we, we can uh, you know wind the bobbin without making the needle bar go up and down and all those parts then we turn it right to re-engage and put pressure on that washer and of course the hand wheel still turns but now the, the needle bar and the hook are supposed to be working now 
Right oh let's let's look up top because I want to see this must have a little mini a little mini uh cam stack in here to have these three different kinds of stitches because usually it just has a little pattern selector with a, some kind of a zigzag pattern disc on there but it must have a couple more one for the blind hem and one for the stretch zigzag stretch zigzag is just the zigzag stitch that makes three little stitches as it moves so instead of one big stitch left and one big stitch right, it makes three little stitches left and three little stitches right. And that's to help uh, fabric flex a little bit, especially knitted fabrics when you're sewing zigzag. The screw is bent. Yeah, the screw is bent a little bit. But let's go ahead and take this plastic. This is plastic. Take the top cover off. Got another thread guide up here. And it's just a little clip in one. And if we look over here, here is that uh, bobbin winder arm I was telling you about the hinges right there and down in here <laughs> wow it's not black the friction ring isn't black I can't tell if it's kind of like tan or cream colored hmm. too bad it's hidden inside <laughs> okay and here's a little here's a little mini cam stack see so when we move this we're going to have a little follower here that goes up to the particular cam you're choosing like I'm going to choose that mm, uh, flex zigzag and you see the follower came all the way up to follow this and if I go in the middle it's going to go to the middle that should be swinging over <laughs> it's going to go to the middle cam for blind hem and then if I go regular zigzag, it's going to drop down to the bottom. Regular zigzag. Little stiff parts here. The left center right needle. Down in there is going to be the end of the needle bar driving arm. And I don't I don't see it down in here, but it's it's working. It's got to be in here someplace that's moving that needle bar left and right okay this plate the cover plate is going to have little plastic mm, protrusions that stick out that go through the body and are going to have little clip-on uh, steel clip-on rings that are crossed over you can kind of pinch with your plier and pull them off I can see three already up here at the top and there's there's going to be more than that it's usually going to be five or six so that comes off but uh, I can see down in here the top of that uh, gear and and the gear is there but but uh, well, part of it part of it was there. <laughs> I think the gear's at the bottom now. <laughs> but the the gear on the horizontal arm looks perfect. So let's take a look at the bottom. We'll see. I'm sure that the timing belt and pulleys and stuff are going to be okay there, since I see that crumpled gear. But let's take a look here anyway. Yep. So this machine was mounted in a cabinet. Or it was sold to be mounted in a cabinet. Because it's got the little flat screw with the screwdriver slot. And it's got a little thin black 
scrunched up felt washer and let's see if we can pull this off of here Oop. there's a piece of the gear <laughs> uh -huh. there's about 30-40 years of lint and dust <laughs> Okay, there is the timing belt. Actually, it looks pretty good. Didn't leave a lot of a uh, get this wet. And... Yeah, not bad. It's got the uh, little teeth. The pulleys are cogged. So even though if I turn the hand wheel, this isn't going to move like it's supposed to. If I if I turn it by hand, it's the timing belt will move over here to the hook pulley, and the hook will rotate. So all that is normal. Everything looks pretty good. Of course, haven't inspected the motor yet, but um, it's just the gear. Hi. Oh, I guess I could show you that. Maybe seen this on some. This is a little uh, drop down light fixture there's a little plastic light socket in here and it takes a bayonet style light that pushes in and turns mm -hmm. and that can be replaced with one of the shorter LED lights hey, I think I'll I think I'll plug it in here and see if the motor runs that real quick. Oops, guess I had it turned on. So let me double check what I told you with this off, no light, no motor. With this on, the motor should go now. Let's see. There you go. Sure use some oil and cleaning, huh? Put it in zigzag. I want to see if that needle is going to swing. If that driving bar really is there. I'll take a look there at the needle bar. Yep. Swinging left and right. Okay, let's put it in blind hem so it'll kind of so. Hmm. So put that in center. Yeah, it'll sew like straight, straight, zigzag, straight, straight, zigzag. Straight, straight, zigzag. Yeah. That's good. And then let's see the three little stitches left and right. One, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah. So that's all looking pretty good. Let's see. Six stitches per inch. I'll watch the feed dog. Okay. And I'll go. Boy, this is real stiff here. I'll go up to 25 stitches, which means the feed dog should just barely, yeah, it's almost going just straight up and down. Okay. All right. I'm going to disconnect this. And... Can get this up any higher? Thought I'd just go ahead and take a look at the motor because I've looked at everything else. But see, see how clean the paint and everything is on this machine, and the hand wheel isn't all chipped up. And so I think it just lost a couple teeth on the gear, and they quit using it. And that's usually why they end up at some place like Goodwill. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Come on, you. That's pretty stiff here. 
Okay. Take off. This is the cover plate for the motor and the motor belt, of course. Oh boy. And uh, take a look back here and see how the motor belt looks and how the motor looks. Just lift off. Hmm. Oh, looks pretty good. Now if you see here, you can tell that the belt is just old and little pieces of it peel up and flake. And then when you, when you run it, you get that musty smell I just got when I ran it and I can see it's thrown off little pieces of uh, motor belt over here. See that dark stain? But the belt itself is still a uh, supple and it's a fiber belt. It's, it's probably the original factory belt which back then was still good. Yep, got about a quarter inch of plate. Look how clean the motor looks. Look how clean everything in there looks. It's a beauty. <laughs> so, I have no idea how to replace that gear on this one. But I do want to send a thank you to Terry Fielding in American Samoa, who owns the site TNT Repair, who was kind enough to provide me some documents for this, because I, I didn't have any. So, I guess I'll investigate it, <clears throat> and if I decide to keep it and try and work on it, I'll probably do some videos if anybody's interested in that. So, there is my, here's something to keep you busy so you stay out of my hair. <laughs> Gifted sewing machine for $14.01. A Singer Model 466. Thanks for tuning in. Take care of yourself.